Hi there, I'm Stephen Forrest from MapleSoft, and I'd like to show you a few features of the Maple kernel for Jupyter. This is a new feature in Maple 2022, which lets you use Maple from within Jupyter. Jupyter is a very popular computing environment, which is free and open source. It's available from various different distribution mechanisms, such as uh, Anaconda, for example. And it's typically distributed uh, with built-in kernels for, for computation engines, uh, such as Python. Uh, so the Maple kernel for Jupyter is a feature bundled with Maple that lets you extend the languages supported by Jupyter to include the Maple language. With Maple and Jupyter installed, it's quite easy to add Maple as a Jupyter kernel. Without further ado, I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll see some examples. So I'll first just open a brand new Maple worksheet, and I will execute the command Jupyter generate kernel configuration. And I just have to give the name of a writable directory. In this case, I'll give my desktop. So here, a subdirectory has been created in my, in my desktop. And I just have to open up, a, uh, in my case, an Anaconda PowerShell, because I installed Jupyter via Anaconda. And I have to add the Maple kernel for Jupyter with the command Jupyter kernel spec install Maple. And that's all there is to it. Maple is now an active kernel within Jupyter. So if we launch Jupyter with Jupyter Lab, and we can now see that Maple 2022 appears as an available kernel for a new notebook. So if I click on this icon, I can open a brand new Maple notebook. So just to verify we are in fact in Maple, let me try a few Maple type commands. First off, a simple infinite summation. So that is the sum of one over n squared from n equals one to infinity, and it comes back as pi squared over six. Um, now, maybe something a little bit more engineering-like. Let's define a differential equation. This is a simple spring equation. Um, you can see that the mathematics is rendered using LaTeX or LaTeX. So it's, it is displayed in, in a textbook-style notation. Uh, we can now solve this uh, differential equation specifying some initial conditions, but for now we're going to specify them with symbolic initial conditions so that you can see that we get a completely generic answer. So that is an answer in terms of the uh, constants I just defined for the initial conditions, C1 and C2, and also the um, previous uh, symbols mass and ks for the spring constant. Um, if I wanted to uh, specify uh, particular initial conditions, I can uh, evaluate this previous result, say c1 equals 1 and c2 equals 0, execute that, and I now get a specific answer. Uh, the, the square root of the spring constant uh, times t over the square root of the mass, all the cosine of that, all of that. Maple is also fully capable of working with units. So let's see some of that in action. If we define with units, now we can multiply quantities with units, such as this example with feet and inches. Um, so you'll notice that comes out as a rational number. That's because the numbers I specified in the example uh, were integers, so it tries to keep everything exact as, as long as possible. If I specify floating point numbers, uh, it, the result is rendered as a floating point number. You'll also notice, of course, that the unit in question is meters. Um, it's standardized for the distance unit on meters. That's because we're working by default within the SI system. You can see what uh, system we're using with the using system. And that shows SI, 
So, so let's let's continue with that example. We can define uh, some time quantity, say in minutes, and then if we do arithmetic with these units, we we will get uh, the expected answer also within the SI system. However, you can change that if you want to work with a different unit system. Uh, you can either change that as a one-off or you can change the system you're using entirely. And in this case, we, we use the SPS, uh, so FPS system. And then we, if we perform the same division again, you'll see now it's represented as a quantity in feet per seconds. The Jupiter kernel for Maple, or rather the Maple kernel for Jupiter, can also uh, is also fully capable of displaying maple plots within Jupiter. So here we can plot a three-dimensional function in uh, our maple session, and it will be rendered as a ping in much the same way as you would see it in maple. Moving on to different types of mathematical content, let's try a matrix. Here we're going to use the Vandermond matrix command from the linear algebra package, which generates a matrix given a set of parameters. In this case, we're going to pick symbolic parameters. So this uh, gives us a four by four matrix and also represents it using LaTeX, LaTeX as a conventional matrix in the way you expect. And you can do all the usual sorts of things with that. So we could, for example, take the determinant of it, Etc. And you get a symbolic expression for that. Because Python is very important for Jupyter users, and Jupyter users are likely to be very conversant in Python and have perhaps a lot of existing content in Python, um, we have a special provision within the Maple kernel for Jupyter for interacting with Python. So by default, this is with a Python bundled with Maple. So that Maple comes with its own Python environment. Uh, it's distributed with its own Python environment with a few of the default packages such as NumPy installed. Um, you can also uh, configure that via environment variables to use your own Python if you want to make use of a special library or that sort of thing. So the keyword is Python, percent Python. And if you type, now though we're in within Maple, we can, we can enter expressions in Python um, and that will import NumPy to the underlying Python session. And that will do the same computation that we just did. Here we're going to use numbers, um, but we're but it is building a Vandermond matrix. But instead, here we're going to build it not within Maple, but within the Python within Maple. So that you've seen, you've executed these two lines that they took effect within the Python session under underneath. Now we would like to to bring that generated content into Maple. Um, you can do that with this command, python evolve string, and that will take a string of Python. Uh, in this case, it's simply the variable name that we assigned to with the previous command. And if we execute that, that gives us a Python object. Um, this is a, a, essentially a, a Python wrapper or a maple wrapper around the Python object. But you can take that thing and convert it to an op to a fully maple object with convert matrix and then what we get is a maple matrix uh, which was computed entirely in python using uh, python libraries um, if you're wondering why it looks a bit different than the symbolic one we computed up here with maple that's because this one is by default normalized but both of them are capable of being computing normalized or not normalized Okay, at this point, I'm going to hit a restart to clear the previous session. And I'm going to return to an example that we saw earlier. That was the this differential equation. And I'm going to generalize it slightly. You'll see why then you'll probably get an idea how with the name. And we're going to add a damping term. in the derivative of x, first derivative of x. So if we execute that now, oh, and I'll put this as f of t. 
So if we put that, now we have a, a, a more general version of this equation. I'm going to define some parameters, uh, specific values for the mass, the spring and damping constant, and uh, the function. And, and now I'm going to use this desolve command again, but the difference is this lies in this last keyword, numeric. Uh, instead of attempting a symbolic solution to the system, this is actually going to give me a, uh, a procedure that I can use to evaluate this at any time point. And of course, this extends in general to a whole system of differential equations. So with this solution procedure, I can now evaluate it at a particular time point. So such as, um, let's say, 0 0.5. And I will get here the value, the time point 5 and the value of x of t and its derivative at those at the at that time point and in particular i can also do a plot here from 0 to 10 and we see the behavior in particular the uh, the gradually lowering amplitude so all of what we've seen here is pretty conventional maple you might have some existing content in maple which you might want to express in inside jupiter and adapt into a jupiter notebook the uh Maple kernel from Jupyter is bundled with Maple with a, with a tool for automatically converting existing Maple worksheets into Jupyter notebooks. So we can learn more about that by reopening Maple. And you, there's looking at the documentation for the Jupyter package. And that in particular describes a couple of, of relevant commands um, such as create notebook. So we're gonna try um, here out an example. So if we, if I open up Maple and go to an existing file, in this case, um, I have a file which uh, which summarizes some of what we've seen before, um, the sort of initial spring equation and the generalized spring mass damper equation. Um, so this is pretty much what we saw before in Jupyter, but represented here in Maple. Now, if I open a new worksheet, um, in this case, this is the same one where I jet previously generated my Jupyter uh, kernel configuration, and I just type Jupyter create notebook. Here, I can just pass the name of a, uh, this is gonna be the notebook that I create. So I'm going to put in, Jupyter Notebooks. So when I execute that, I get back, this is a size of the generated file. And if I open up the directory where I generated that in Jupyter, I now have a file SMD which contains the same content in Jupyter. So, and you can see that it's all live and I can perform the same computations that we saw before, but these came straight out of the Maple worksheet. A big benefit though for advanced Jupyter users is that you have access to all the familiar and powerful features of Jupyter, such as the Markdown based formatting environment, along with the power of the Maple computation environment. So if we open this one here, um, this is an example of a worksheet in which we've made liberal use of Markdown style formatting along with um, mixing with Maple so that you can see all the content, uh, text content formatted attractively um, in a textbook style, all using Markdown. And, but all of the executable content is, is Maple. So proficient Jupyter users could then concentrate on the task of, of posing their computations to Maple and, and taking advantage of Maple's special tools for, for that without uh, worrying about how, how they, have, they have to structure the document containing them. And of course, you can do all the kinds of conventional things you expect from a Jupyter kernel, such as 
language aware tab completion, export to PDF, etc. So I think that's given you a glimpse into the Maple kernel for Jupyter and what you can do with it. If you want to find out more, just open up your copy of Maple and type in Jupyter comma Maple kernel um, and read this and related uh, documentation pages. They'll explain how you set it up in the way you saw and also um, how to make use of the tools that we, we already discussed. Thanks very much for your attention.